Well, that last video was a ton of fun to make, and I enjoyed making this bait so much. So much so that I decided to make five more to sell in my group. Man, this was such a blast. It, was, it worked so well that I'm, I'm still really excited about this bait. It didn't get hit, so, you know, it's going to go back into the box and get another try at it next year. The musky season is basically closed here in New York. There's probably about another 24 hours left of it, but I'm done fishing. So I'm gearing into the off season. I'm thinking about doing a show. I have this stack of seven inch kudas right here that is that just needs to be carved but that's a lot of carving and with this carving that i have to do and all of that carving that's a lot of monotony and i'm going to need to break that up a little bit so i had the idea of kind of now that I'm getting into the off season and gearing up towards the spring, I think I want to have a few more baits for my box to use in the spring and all of next season. So I think I'm going to use this off season to build a whole bunch of one-off baits and it's just another idea for me to be able to keep the ball rolling on making YouTube videos. So keep a lookout for more of these in the future. But first, I'm going to make another bait out of this piece of wood here, a buddy of mine gave me this block of eastern red cedar. It's a little different from what I'm used to working with. It's definitely a lot more dense. It's a pretty dense wood. The grain isn't quite as tight and uniform as the, the western red cedar. But it's really cool wood and uh, you know, there's definitely lots of knots and inclusions in it but I'll work around that. I think it's going to be fun to build another bait. So let's do that. Let's build another bait. So before I do anything really, I need to make sure that I have a nice jointed edge on the side of this board. Whoever milled this up, they put a nice face on both sides, but both edges are pretty rough on more so this side. This is a little on the flatter side, but it's still pretty rough. I think it's really important in bait making to start out with a square stock. Everything that I do in my shop and in my bait making process kind of relies on having a nice squared up jointed so I'm going to run this over my joiner, then I'm going to run this through uh, my table saw and then the miter saw and we'll start out with a block of wood that's nice and squared up. And I'm thinking maybe something on the smaller side for this bait. I'm kind of feeling a small bait today. Yeah, I'm feeling a small bait. All right, I got three blocks of wood that are all the same exact size. I traced one of them out, and now I'm just gonna basically just start drawing. I don't, I kind of had a shape in mind, but you know, this is the part where I'm just gonna completely freelance and just do whatever. I'll see how it turns out. I'll probably draw a ton of lines and erase a whole bunch before I land on something that I really like. So let's just start drawing here. Yeah, it looks good. It kind of looks a, a little bit like the war pig that I do, but it's different enough. And I this block of wood is so thick that I I think it's going to look like a lot more of a rounder bait. The war pig that I make is a flat-sided router table bait, but this is a pretty chunky size of wood, so I feel like this pattern would lend to more of like a rounder, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like a, a Rapala type shape. But we'll see. And while it's still on the flat piece of paper, I'm gonna kind of like start thinking about the lip angle. I kind of wanted a shallower bait, so I think I might make like a steeper lip instead of like a longer deep diving lip. I kind of want something that's gonna be pretty shaky, but kind of still staying pretty shallow. So I'm, I'm almost thinking like a nose pull toe point with kind of like a steeper lip angle, something along the lines of that. I think that if I put my toe point right here under the nose and give it a pretty, pretty steep lip, say down to about here, yeah, we'll see what happens. We're gonna come up right up to that center line. I don't know what angle this is, but Kind of looks right. I don't know. It might not work at all, but let's do it anyway. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out with an X-Acto knife. I'm just cutting this right out on the table saw. Hmm. 
Now, if I had plans to reproduce this bait, I would build one of these like angle holders that I use to, to cut my lip slots. However, on this one, you know what? <laughs> I'm only gonna build this bait once. I think I'm just going to line up my lip slot with this table saw blade, just eyeing it up. Nothing precise about it really. And then I'm just gonna clamp it to my crosscut sled here. And once I feel like it's in place, it's not going anywhere, I'm lined up pretty good. And I'm just gonna cut this out and raise it up until I feel like I'm getting close to that line, that mid side, mid line there. And uh, we'll just see how it goes. So I don't see anything bad happening here. The only issue that I could really have is if, say, the polycarbonate didn't fit into the lip slot after one pass, I would need to then make an adjustment and move it over just a little bit just to widen that lip slot. But if it doesn't fit on the first after one pass, I'll just widen that up on a bandsaw blade or something. I just want to get this first cut done. And since I want this to be a nose pull here, I'm probably gonna have that, that lip is coming down to say right where this block of wood ends. It's probably gonna be up here. This is all just guesswork. Just trying to have some fun with it. So my through wire channel is gonna go from there to straight out the back. And that through wire channel is going to go through the lip. And front hook hanger, probably want it up close underneath that lip, maybe like around here. I'm gonna mark that all off. So I'm gonna be passing through that pretty deep, but that's good. And I think I'm gonna wait right up to that midline. Eye sockets, right up here. That looks about right. All right, I can cut it out. Typically I like to drill out this weight hole while it's still a block of wood, but if you happen to cut it out before, it's not a big deal. You just use uh, the cutoff to use as a holder. Basically I'm just cutting corners right now, trying to do this as fast as I can. Depth is set. That's pretty good. All right, so I just marked out on the bait right where the eye sockets are gonna be. Put my eye socket Forstner bit in there. I'm gonna just basically start drilling till I feel like I'm deep enough and set the depth and then flip it around and do the other side. All right, that looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. So now I just basically need to just draw out these tapers and uh, I'm gonna do it as quickly as I can. This doesn't need to be perfect. I think it's going to be pretty symmetrical if I can just eyeball it. I'm, I'm pretty good at eyeballing it. I think the tapers are gonna start though, just behind the eye to the tail and then just in front of the eye to the nose. And then I have this bendy ruler, which is nice to do taper lines on a curved back. Uh, I think the tail, I kind of want to be like on the pointy side. Same thing on the nose. When cutting these tapers, you kind of want to err on the side of leaving more material on, especially if you're gonna do any hand carving, because you can always take material off. If you get too aggressive on these taper cuts, you can kind of screw yourself or box yourself into having the bait look a certain way that you might not have liked. You know what? I think I'm just going to eyeball this on a belt sander and just kind of round it over. I don't want this to be straight. I want this to be round. And I think the best way to go about that, now that I have some straight lines, it's going to kind of give me some guidance as to where I want to sand to. But I kind of want it to just round itself over.
All right, I'm gonna try to do a little carving with the spoke shave. It's such a small bait to do with a spoke shave. I'm hoping I have enough, yeah, I got enough room here. In these softer woods, you don't wanna clamp down super hard because you'll kind of dent the wood. Ooh, this is different than what I'm used to working with. All right, and now the shape is done. I like the shape, it turned out pretty nice. So now I have to just drill out the through wire channel. I marked a spot in the back and the front, and basically I'm just gonna try to connect those two dots through the lip slot, through the weight hole, right out the back. I'm gonna use a 3 16th bit in the front, and I'm going to use a smaller bit in the back. I think it's like an eighth. All right, in the last part of the woodworking, I'm just going to carve out these eye sockets. All right, last thing I'm going to do for the day is give it a good seal, and uh, tomorrow I should be able to uh, start with the lip and uh, go from there, but... Ooh, that looks really cool. This wood is so cool. It's like, uh, it's definitely got a, a lot of purple going on. Alrighty, hanging that up overnight. I'll be back tomorrow. Alright, we're all sealed up. Looking good. And ready for a lip. So this is one of the tougher parts and probably the most important part of putting a bait together is is getting the lip right. Lip shape and lip angle, size and shape of the bait all just kind of really need to work together. It's pretty important that you get it right. You can kind of get away with being off the mark a little bit. The margin for error, it's big enough to where you can do something that might not be optimal and still get good results, but for the style of bait I'm trying to make here, you know, I think this needs to be just right. So, I'm kind of thinking right off the top of my head, looking at this bait is just a round lip, something that's not, doesn't really go wide, you know, something maybe that's straight out, maybe even just the same width as the base. And maybe even just kind of looking at this opening on these calipers kind of looks like what I might be going for, but just kind of rounded. First things first, I'm gonna draw a center line. 
So now that I have that marked, I can mark the edges. Now I kind of want to determine how long it's going to be. You know, I don't think I want it to be very long. I kind of want it to be kind of stubby. Not too stubby, but stubby enough. Yeah, that looks good. It's looking good. So then I'll just connect the edge of the lip here to the edge up here, straight line, go right into the circle. Same thing over here. All right, let's cut it out. And peeled back a little bit of the tape just to kind of give it a test fit and uh, I kind of like it. I think that's a good looking lip. So now I'm basically just going to take this out, put the tape back on and uh, I'm going to kind of clean up these edges because they look horrible. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and scuff up the lip where it's going to contact the bait. This just gives the epoxy something to grab onto. All right, I think that looks good enough. It's pretty straight. Toe point coming right out the nose. Might be a little long, I don't know. Let's find out. All right, now I gotta let this thing set until tomorrow and then I can come back and I'm gonna re-drill this hole through the glass, punch back into this hole, run my wires through and finish wiring this thing up. All right, the epoxy's all cured up. So I'm gonna take a drill bit with a brad point and um, just kind of let this hole guide me through that lip and uh, hopefully just punch straight through the lip into the weight chamber. All right, so to twist up the toe point, I'm going to just kind of tie a loop. I'm gonna bend it just a little bit in one direction, grab it on top of that angle and just wrap it around. And then I'm just gonna wrap it around a bunch of times. Those loops fit real snug. All right, I like that. That looks good. And the loop is big enough where I can, it gives me enough play to kind of tune the bait and kind of bend this left or right. So now I just have to twist up a hook hanger and basically do the same loop that I just did, except I want this to be as small as I can make it. And this is what I'm gonna feed the through wire through, just like this. And then I could just go ahead and finish wrapping this one up. And that should sit there just nicely, kind of buried a little bit. That'll be really good. Perfect. And now I can basically just install this. I just want this thing covered in epoxy as much as I can get on it. Get a little bit onto the rod. And then just try and clean it up the best I can. Actually, while I have this epoxy mixed up, I think I'm just going to go ahead and pin these lips right now. Get a hole started. Uh.
and I'll just be able to sand those off in the morning before I pour the lead and these lips are pinned. All right. Always pin your lips. Never skip that. Ever. And with the bait clamped up on the wall here, I'm going to top the through wire channel off with epoxy. pretty nasty out but I, I wanted to test this thing to make sure that it runs before I waste my time painting it and I just put it in the water and I am not happy with the action on this bait I don't know if you can see this but it's shaking now it's a little bit all over the place but it skips its cadence like it's it get, runs for like a second and then it just kind of glides through the water it stops running it definitely wants to scatter left and right, which is nice, but uh, I think the lip is just a little too long. So I think I'm gonna have to modify this lip before I move forward. So I'm, I think I'm thinking about just sanding it down uh, to be just a little bit shorter and we'll just see if that works. All right, here goes nothing. All right, let's see what this thing does now. Oh, that's much better. All right, I'm thinking something kind of simple here. Uh, I really don't have anything in mind. Uh, I'm just gonna start painting. I put some gray in my airbrush. So I'm gonna give it a gray base and then maybe some silver and maybe some green. I don't know, let's paint this thing gray first. And I think I wanna give it a white belly. So we'll come back titanium white. And then I'm going to coat the whole thing in a little pearl white. I think I'm going to touch up the side with this a little bit of yellow. And then a little bit of this green, uh, permanent green light it's called. And I'm going to do one more layer of pearl white to kind of just tie those colors back into the base. I'm going to give it a quick layer of ender coat. Not really sure what to do with the back, so black it is. And since we got the green and yellow, let's just give it a red stripe down the belly so we could do the stoplight pattern. Made famous by Vance from Fat AZ Musky Product. Let's do the stoplight. And 
and we'll put a little mesh on this to give it some scales. I'm thinking silver scales, because why not? This mesh is a little on like the rigid side. I don't really like this stuff, especially for such a round shape. Doesn't want to go on to a round shape. Uh, it sucks. Oh god. Oh, I hate this mesh. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, it's tearing the paint off because it's too rigid. It doesn't want to shape to the bait. And then a little bit of black back down the spine. Hopefully this doesn't look horrible because this mesh ruined it. Yeah, that mesh ruined it. Oh my god. What a terrible thing to do. Alright, well, then you cover it with black. Try to cover up the mistakes on the belly with red. Oh my gosh, there's so many. This is so horrible. Honestly, this might be one of the worst paint jobs I've ever done. Look at that. That is horrible. What a terrible job. Oh well. What are you going to do? Basically I'm just going to hit it with one more layer of inner coat and um, put some eyes in it, some epoxy and maybe some of these mistakes will disappear under the epoxy and then once the epoxy is done if I really feel ambitious I can come back into the paint booth and put down some more colors on top of some smooth epoxy to really hide everything that uh, I screwed up and uh, it could look perfect. So. After putting the epoxy on it, I don't quite hate it as much as I did beforehand. Uh, it did kind of hide some of the imperfections. Um, I kind of like how the texture looks. There's definitely a lot of imperfections. That paint really got torn up by that scale mesh, but what are you going to do? I didn't put any eyes in it because I didn't want the eyes in place in case I was going to do some painting. I didn't want to get paint on the eyes. So I guess I might as well do something to this bait. I'm thinking maybe a little bit of uh, like transparent green on the back, maybe tie that into the sides a little bit. Um, maybe I'll touch up the, the belly with some more red and uh, re-black the eyes and uh, I think we'll be good to go. So let's do that now. I'm just gonna touch the back up with a little bit of interference green. And then just a little bit of transparent black down the middle. And some carbon black for the eyes. And I'm going to find out if it's a bad idea to yellow up that yellow just a little bit. I think it's uh, getting kind of lost. And this is a transparent yellow. So that silver really should still be nice and shiny. And I'm liking the effect. And I'm going to do a little bit of transparent green. Let's see if this is a bad idea. The yellow worked out. I like the yellow. Well, that's not too bad. I like it. It looks good. It's ready for some eyes. Stop light.
All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks again for watching. This was a lot of fun to make. You know, I made some mistakes, but I also had a lot of fun. It can be really frustrating when you don't get the results you were expecting. Um, I was frustrated with the, the lip. Luckily, my mistake with that was making it a little bit too long, so I was able to shorten it. It can be really frustrating when it's something that you can't fix and you just have to learn from it, move on, make an adjustment, and try again. Um, but fortunately uh, for this bait, I ended up getting some pretty good action. I got to tow it behind a boat and you know, it looks pretty good. Uh, it scatters a little bit from left to right. It looks like it's gonna be pretty shallow and uh, I got the results I was looking for, so that's awesome. So this one's gonna go into my box and uh, I'm gonna run it in the spring and we'll see what happens. But overall, a lot of fun, good results. It looks okay, so I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys.